Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Carex and we are doing a Europa Universalis 4 beginner tutorial for complete beginners. This is up to date for 2021. Spring 2021 big patch came out, probably the biggest patch of the year and maybe one of the biggest patches to ever come out for Europa Universalis ever. Um, actually, I think that's actually like an objective fact at this point. It's huge. And uh, it came with the Leviathan DLC, the Southeast Asian update, and the North, uh, North American update. Um, of course, we're doing a beginner guide, so we are focused on, on beginner nations like France and, you know, Portugal and Castile and England and this sort of general neck of the woods, which is highly recommended for new players. And, um, yeah, things are going well. It's, it's 1461. We've talked about a lot of things. We've done multiple wars. We got out of our second wave of wars. We did a successful war against England, and then we followed that up with the wars against Provence and wars against the papacy. In fact, the papacy has gotten just annihilated by Venice in this situation. In fact, Venice doesn't like us. We, we might need to do something to get Venice on our good side here as they're getting a little bit stronger and a little bit more influential. And the fact that we're still excommunicated just means that everybody in Europe hate, hates us, which is kind of a bummer. We got very unlucky. If you're playing as France, make sure to butter up the Pope, and that won't happen to you. The Pope almost never does this to France. France is an upstanding member of Christendom. So there's no reason why the Pope would do that, but for some reason they did that to us. So it was because we were allied to their rival, right? Provence. They don't like Provence. Anyways, that's been causing a lot of headaches, and this run would be going way smoother if it wasn't for that excommunication. It's actually kind of funny how unique our journey is as is going here. Um, and again, really, that's just a testament to the fact that you can't make a guide for a specific nation. This isn't how to play France. This is how to play Europa de Versailles. You gotta roll with the punches. You gotta roll with the punches. Um, but thanks everybody for being here, guys. We're at peace, and we need to do some things while at peace before we initiate, um, before we initiate war against Ireland. And I need a diplomat to do this, so we're going to wait five days. Get a diplomat. I need to start the integration process on Orleans. We're above 190. We're at 200. That's fantastic. Start annexing them. Booyah. Booyah. Okay. Let's bring this back. We don't need to work on their opinion anymore. They're plenty happy with us. Have we actually... Uh, are there? Is there anyone we need to uh, royal marry? It looks like we've royal married everybody. Cool. Um, nice, nice, nice. So we're working on integrating and, and centralizing the Orléans provinces into France proper. And that will give us an economic boost, a production boost, a trade boost. That'll just boost us up. It won't give us really much of a military boost, but in, uh, through the economy boost and the trade boost, that will, of course, let us leverage a larger army um, in, in that sense. We could start working on Armagnac and trying to get them integrated. They're quite low right now, opinion-wise, with us. Although we also need to just set up a... Um, we need to set up and build a spy network against Offaly, too. So... Let's get a spy network going on Offaly, then we'll start working on Armagnac. It'll take a it'll take a few years. In fact, does it estimate this? If we click on Orleans, a province, and we see that they're being integrated right now, that's what this bar down here is. And it says it'll take about seven years. Seven years for them to be fully integrated. What is this? The Duke. I'll restore the dukedom of, uh, of this area up here. Make these guys an independent vassal of ours. Give this guy some autonomy. He's a 353. Three. That doesn't really matter to us, because... This will be someone that we don't get to control. Oh no! We're going to lose the stability. We have plus one stability. We're going to lose it. And the, uh, the nobility is going to be very upset. Oh well. I'm going to seize land from everybody, including the nobility first. We're going to hit this button. They're going to get even more upset, but they're still barely above that. 30 is that floor. You don't want to go below 30. So we seize the land. We're constantly trying to take back crownland that's something that, because we can actually dole out crownland later and get really big benefits from it some of these privileges that we've skipped over actually force us to give up crownland and we don't want to do that if we're going to be below 30 because we need to hold on to our 
30% crown land. Plus we get bonuses if we can get higher crown land as well. So we want to keep trying to snag back our crown land. I think we can do this once every five years. Let's actually summon a, a, a Diet, which we haven't done before. And this gives us a little goal to work on, a little agenda to work on here. And these are ways to butter up and, and help out the different factions here and, and butter them up specifically. Bordeaux, they, uh, the clergy wants Bordeaux to have a higher base tax, which is developing Bordeaux's base tax right here, which costs administrative power. Administrative power is incredibly precious to us. So while that would probably be smart to do, um, I don't know if this is something we want to do. Oh. Oh. Wants us to own Armagnac. Upon completion with falling effects, France will not get the diplomatic reputation penalty for annexing Armagnac. This would have been amazing if this said Orléans, because <laughs> that's who we're working on right now. We're not working on Armagnac. There's a penalty. When you integrate a subject, there's a penalty. That's actually amazing. We would have 20 years to do this. This wants us to get a certain amount of trade power in a province that we just, in an area that we don't down here, we just don't have that much trade power down there. That would, that would be, that would be, this one would be a difficult one. 65% trade power in that area. Probably not going to happen. I think honestly, yeah, I think we're going to do this. We're going to do the proposal of the, uh, it, 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 this is a, that's a long-term goal, but we do have 20 years to do it. We've completed some missions. We have the high income. We're, we're going to save this. This gives us the benefit to this. And the income is never going to go down. The income is always going to stay high. Um, but the construction cost reduction, we're going to wait till we're going to build a bunch of buildings. We're not going to be building any buildings right now. We're going to wait until we get the next admin technology. However, the next admin technology is going to require us to in, uh, uh, obtain a renaissance. We're going to want the renaissance um, to be integrated into our country, which is taking some time. Well, it's taking some time. That, that's all there is really to say. You know, honestly, I think if Saluzzo actually liked us, though, it would spread faster. I think if Saluzzo liked us, it would spread faster. And Savoy likes us. They have not embraced it yet. So once they embrace it, okay, okay, okay. I, th I think this is all coming together. I think it'll take a few years, but I think it's going to start spreading very faster. We do want to butter up Saluzzo. We want to make these guys happy for that reason. Okay, the rebels have spawned. We actually forgot about them for a second, but they are trounced. Other rebels that we have coming. We still have the Meath being separatists. We have rebels that are going to be spawning here in Ar Arvignon. We have... Uh, Navarran rebels over here in Lombard, who for the most part not really we it's only three percent, uh, only three percent here. Uh, overextension is causing that to be inflated. War exhaustion is causing that to be inflated. Um, that's that's actually going to go away on its own. That's probably not going to happen. If we actually read this down here, it's saying it's going to be uh, twenty five years, right? There's no way that in twenty five years those guys are still going to care to to revolt. So that's something we don't have to worry about. This is going to take, actually, this is only going to be 3.2 years. Oh, this is actually, a lot of this is actually coming from the fact that we have war exhaustion. War exhaustion adds a lot of national unrest. We can pay this down, however. It goes down 0.1 per month. However, if we go to war with any of these, uh, if we go to war with any of these Irish miners, it won't be going down. It only goes down during peacetime. We can pay to reduce it, however. I'm going to pay to reduce it. It's a little bit of diplomatic power. That's fine. We're actually still making diplomatic power, even though we're spending five per month to integrate the Orleans. So that's cut our income quite a bit on the diplomatic power, but it's still technically going to be going up. And we already have a lot of it here, even if we are slightly behind on diplomatic technology. Not a big deal. We'll survive with less diplomatic technology. Let's get our heavy ships all bunched up here. Can we build more lights? We can build another light. Can we make any states? Let's say we can state Ireland. I don't know if we want to state Ireland. We might keep Ireland as a territory. Focus on stating the homeland. Things are moving and grooving. Oh, no way. Tell us about the Iberian Empire. We're among the possible options. They went left. Let us bind our des their destiny to ours as their choice. Booyah. Castile is our ally. Castile is now. Oh, and they have Naples. 
Let's go. Castile, Aragon have had a royal wedding that shook the foundations of Europe and Christendom. The papacy is pleased to know that Spain will rise. A good Catholic nation. Thanks to the wedding between Castile and Aragon, they are now a union. And hopefully Aragon will come over here and help with the civil war a little bit, because this is just looking gnarly over here. But now we have Castile, Aragon, and Naples are one. So that is going to be an incredible ally. Um, what was going on here? Oh, we'd lose 10 legit. We're gaining legitimacy every year. I don't mind losing a little bit. This is trending up to 100, and we're at 100 now. So we might as well lose 10 to let it come up a bit. But this will make the nobility unhappy with us for a moment. Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, nobility is going to be unhappy with us for a few months. But it is going to trend back up to 68%. If we hover over this number here, negative 28, or the, the red number that's 28, it's not negative 28, but 28% is a negative. It's saying it's going up by 0.36% per month. Three months from now, it'll be above 30. They won't be angry anymore. In fact, if we blink right now, they're going to be happy. So, and that's going to get rid of all this national unrest modifier that we're getting right now. So that'll that'll go away. So we're getting a little bit of a stability penalty from that. And next month, whoosh, it should go back to normal next month. Good. Mathian separatists are at 80%. So this has gone red. It's warning us. We have troops that are ready standing by for that. We can actually have a leader uh, over there in Ireland ready for that. Scotland wants an ally, allyship. I'm going to say no. I still don't think we want to ally Scotland. We're just protecting them against England, but we don't want to ally them. I think it's oh, it's time to get the the uh, thing on um, Offaly here. Let's get ready to attack them. Who is it we wanted to butter up? Uh, Saluzzo, right? We want to butter up Saluzzo, who's the uh, founder of the Renaissance. We want them to share their wisdom with us by being uh, friendly to them. Let's attack Offaly, though. Leinster will join. If we attack Leinster, will Offaly join? Offaly will join. They only have 4,000 total troops. Total troops. Now, here's the interesting thing is, we can do something we haven't done before. We can make them what's called a co-belligerent. We can hit this button here, call them as a co-belligerent. This means that Leinster will be able to call their ally. So it's an ally chain, right? So it creates a ripple effect. If Leinster was allied to England, by us declaring this war an awfully and making Leinster co-belligerent, England would defend. England would join in. That is not what's happening right now, though. Instead, Leinster is only allied to Offaly, so we might as well co-belligerent them so we can get both of their lands in the same war um, without 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 the we, at the same cost. We can we can basically take this land and this land, and um, we won't have to like we won't get any penalties from that. Like we would usually take penalty if we ta if we declare war on on Leinster, but we take all of Offaly's land. There's a, there's a diplomatic penalty for that. We have to do some diplomatic gymnastics to pull that off. Chasing them here, where they have four thousand troops, and just sort of taking them out. They're the only fort in Ireland is actually just their little trivia fact is in Desmond. It's the only fortification, the only castle in Ireland in this game. This is represented in this game. There's tons of castles in Ireland. I'm pretty sure. Um, these are just capital forts so the capital forts are quite a bit weaker what we're going to do is we're going to do a carpet siege making a bunch of little groups here we're going to drop actually uh, we're to send 5,000 to that capital drop off 1,000 there Send 2,000 over here and send the rest over here. And the way I'm doing this is I'm hitting the V key. When you select a bunch and you hit V, it drops the bottom one, then it drops the next one, then it drops the next one. And you can see how the units that I'm selected have dropped. I've moved them all to here, moved them all to there, moved them all there, drop them all off one at a time. And now you can see all these guys just, that's a little bit of a trick. You can you can just do it manually. Um, it, it, if the game is paused, there's literally no difference. It's just something I like to do. And I just wanted to make sure I was explaining the the magical waving of my hands there. Now, actually, we could actually bring up, we can actually get this uh, navy flexing a little bit, these heavies. 
get her heavies flexing. Eight heavies. Let's come over here and actually help blockade Desmond. That will make that siege go significantly faster. I am a doofus because I completely forgot that there was a rebellion going on. Whoops. Um, go get these 8,000. <laughs> Hopefully the, the, they don't attack us with their ships, but we'll engage with ours if they do. Let me bring these troops over here. I would prefer to have... Really? Blocked by a hostile fort? We can't move back out of here even though we moved into here? We'll just wait. These rebels aren't going to do anything bad. We got years before they like enforce demands or something. Okay, so we have... We need to butter people up. We need to make these guys happy with us. Um, Savoy actually already likes us. I feel like making them like us more wouldn't be a bad thing. We want Milan. Milan likes us. Genoa is kind of on that edge. 100 is the maximum that you can get when you improve relations. So we're at 69 right here. Improve relations 69. Minus 3 per year. It decays over time. So we could get another 31 with Savoy. We can get another 31. For an ally, Castile really doesn't like us that much. I actually kind of want to butter Castile just a touch. We actually have another idea that we can get. Let's go. Another idea. Which one was this? Recruitment time, minus 10%. Not that great, but hey, you know. And we'll see how we're building up, the, we're filling up this bar one more away from an extra diplomatic relationship slot. We can get another ally. We can get another alliance. That'd be kind of cool. So that's a French specific idea that we'd be getting. Oh. Someone died over here. Master of the Mint. We know we have inflation issues, right? We have 3% inflation. It's now going down 0.1 per year. It's not much, but hey, 30. if this guy lives for 30 years, if he lives till he's 65, he'll get rid of all of that inflation. Kind of for free, in a sense. It's a nice little benefit to him also advising the king. I wonder why the opinion with Castile is so low. I mean, I know we're excommunicated, but still. Same religion, enemy of enemy, royal marriage, alliance. That excommunication is such a negative modifier. It's insane. It is such a heavy modifier. Okay, here we go. These sieges are done. Let's go take out these, these rebels. Actually, I don't want to engage the Navy here. I don't want to... Well, actually, we can capture ships. We can capture ships. So, yes, we do. If we fight them, we can steal their, their transports and their lights. I'll be honest, I don't... Uh, naval maintenance was... Uh, naval combat was literally just re redone in this patch. I don't know exactly how it all works. What's, what's changed and what hasn't and stuff. Okay, we won the battle here against the rebels. Okay, these guys are 100% sieged. So let's get a diplomat so we can end the war. That was clean. That was clean. Brittany is allied to England. If we attack England, Brittany will defend. Brittany only has like what seems to be 4,000 troops, so I'm not impressed, but they do provide... A bit of a navy, a tiny navy. I'm going to take these light ships and get them protecting trade in Bordeaux and just have them rejoin with the trade fleet. They'll automatically join up. It says we can get a technology, but again, this 13% penalty. I'm just not interested in getting technologies right now. We can save these points, let it ride, and when we get Renaissance, we can get them nice and cheap and catch up really easily. So we're just letting that ride. Re trying to See, all this is spreading of Renaissance. And once this spreads, that penalty will go away, which is great. Oh, nice. We can make Provence into a state now. Good. It's going to cost us more. So when you take land, it costs administrative points to core it. That makes it a territory. If you state it, you have to pay more administrative points to make it a state. 
In fact, the, another way to look at this is the total cost of core province is halved when you first conquer it. And then you pay the other half the other way. Like this is a very high development province right here. It's 20 development. It's going to cost us 200 administrative points to develop this completely. We've done half. Now we have another half to do. So that's going to be another 200 and so many points to do that. The nice thing is these cores are instantaneous and they don't cause overextension. The state cores are not something that penalize you if you don't do them. It's just you're missing the opportunity to make them into a state because if you don't make them into a state, the autonomy will never come down. And what you're trying to do is get that autonomy to come down. Yeah, we know that the income is high. Now what that should do though, to be fair, is that should give us, stating that land should give us more naval force limit because these are coastal ports. So that should contribute to our force limit for, for ships. We should be able to build more ships. In addition to just probably being able to get a bigger army and stuff like that as well. A 50% cost military advisor level 2 could be quite good. Or just local defensiveness plus 25%. We're not a very defensive. We're an aggressive country. We're not a defensive country. Now this guy's really good because he adds 5% discipline. However, half cost level 2 advisor will get us just more points more quickly. I think that's what we're going to want. We might switch to the discipline guy when we attack England in six years for the combat advantage. But I think this extra, the fort defense is not a big deal, but the cheaper advisor in the higher amount of advising that he does, the more military skill we get is critically important in order to get more of this offensive idea group. The more military points we can get right now, the faster we can go up this military track this offensive ideas track and get all of these amazing benefits, which include a permanent 5% discipline at the end. So that's way better than, way better than uh, just having an advisor gives five, although you can stack those together. No, England has a queen. Queen Margaret. De Anjou, de Anjou, Anjou? Hmm. Holy cow. The Queen of England is of Frankian culture. That's kind of cool. I'm sure if like, I'm sure we're somewhere in line for the throne, right? <laughs> Maybe. That's interesting to me. Although she, I don't think she's of our dynasty. No, she's of the Provence dynasty. Or is she? I don't even know. I don't even know what dynasty she is. She's of her own dynasty. She's not of the typical English dynasties. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. But the queen is way more proficient than the king was. Although they're still way behind on their technologies. We're at 545. They're at 344. And administered by these is one of the most important technologies too. We don't want to state that province. Although there is a state, uh, somewhere around here, there's a state. Where do I have it? Here, let's, 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 oh, states and territories. There we go. And we can make sure that we've stated everything here. And I don't think we want to state Ireland because it's kind of cheap land. It's kind of poor, poor land up there. So we're going to keep this as a territory. We're going to focus on using our, our governing capacity and our states, our limit, our finite amount of stating that we can do. We're going to focus it in the, in the rich and expensive areas. Castile's plenty happy with us. Let's pull these guys back. But we might kind of just give a, get a little bit of a buffer on Savoy as they're starting to look a little shaky there. They're starting to look a little shaky. It looks like they're excommunicated too. Holy cow. Hey, look, Saluzo is... Uh, well, they're threatened towards us. How is this affecting the spread? Nearby friendly province has the Renaissance. 0.4. European development... Pro 5... Um, European five development province post 10 development, 20 development. So the only way this would really go up is if we had, if this province was just a higher development. So this is getting a nearby friendly province, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. So really just the, de the development and then the speed modifier as well. Okay. This is embraced, this is embraced, and this is embraced. So there's more provinces. Should this, well, this isn't getting multiplied by two friendly provinces. I thought 
I think the more friendly, pro I th the more touching that there was, the the better. Well, what can I say? It's taking its sweet time. We can wait. We can wait. England's not going anywhere, clearly, with their technolo technology. They're struggling quite a bit. Rebels, rebels, rebels. We know we're going to have these guys popping up at some point. So we have 20,000 troops waiting for them down there. Oh, I forgot we're in this war. we got to get out of this war. Whoops. Time to end this war. The crazy thing is we could literally just take it all. But we're just going to do this. No one's going to be upset by it. We'll just attack them in a bit. Let's get a spy network on the next guy. Let's look at the alliance networks actually over here. Who can we attack that isn't buddy-buddy with England or Scotland? Scotland's allied to these two. England's allied to these two. So that means that, from what I can tell, it's the ones we've been attacking and this guy. This guy's the one... This is the weak link. So let's get a spy network on the weak link. Start coring that land again. The notifications up here, you really can play the game just from these notifications. I apologize for speeding through some things, but the thing comes up, it says it reminds you you need to core that land. Boom, core the land. Boom, boom, boom. Man, Venice is popping off over here. I'm loving it. I actually really want to do a Venice playthrough. I think Venice is just so cool. Venice is like this like slithery, slimy nation that just has all these little bits here. It's kind of like Genoa, but even more powerful. And they really tussle with the Ottomans early, and you have so many opportunities for early expansion. You just it's it's just pouring over. Your cup floweth 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 over with I, I can't even speak, guys, clearly. Although I'm speaking like the old English or something over here. Floweth over with options. And it's uh it seems like it'd be fun. Also, you can kind of play tall and just make a bunch of money from trade and stuff too. Playing tall in this game means that you don't expand uh, you don't do a lot of military conquest. You develop up your provinces. You spend a lot of your points on just pumping up your provinces, building buildings, and, and you invest at home in, in your own infrastructure rather than just stealing everybody else's land. You can play tall as France, to be honest, and do quite well and be quite powerful. Um, although France is kind of, you know, just historically... Historically, it certainly makes sense to, uh, France is, is not one to uh, be satisfied with, with France's own land. Oh, we're at 20 here. So we can get this. Heck, we can attack these guys right away. I mean, there's nothing. We don't have to wait. Who do we need to butter up? So, so Aragon's opinion of us is irrelevant at this point because they're a partner of Castile. Castile and Aragon are joined at the hip. I'm going to attack these guys since we have the option to now. Distant war. I think Castile, if I'm not mistaken, I think Castile will help us against England. Yes, they will. England's in... Wait a second. England is in a war? Provence and Geneva? Oh, no. Ah, Brittany, you jerk. Ah. <sighs> Brittany's doing what we didn't want them to do. Brittany is doing what we didn't want them to do. They're taking this province. You jerk, Brittany. We really should have attacked these guys before they allied England, but they allied England. That was a huge mistake. Well, when the war against England, when we do the war against England, we're going to have to just annul the alliance. We're going to have to force Brittany to annul their alliance with England, break them off, and then go in and attack them when they're isolated. If we attacked into England now, though, Castile will join. Castile doesn't like England. They don't. They trust us. We have a strong diplomatic reputation. It's it's all it's all green, green to go. That'll be amazing. So as long as Castile doesn't get into any silly wars. Um, from now and then, then we should be good there.
So we are going to need to get a military access through these guys to go up to their ally, right? Because again, if we go to the diplomatic screen, you can see these guys are in the war. They're red. So they're in the war with us. Whoops. Tensions between nobility and clergy. What is this about? Hmm. It's pointing us to a specific province. This province here for some reason. It's saying go to here. What's going on? Jesus lived among beggars and fishermen. Why don't you? <laughs> it, it looks like the Pope's on the side of the uh, or, or I don't know I don't know what's going on here I'd say a big a big revolt's gonna start up, up here actually is what it's saying this will reduce the opinion that, that, that the papal state has us by minus 100 they already just hate us to the core I hate to say it but Jesus lived among beggars and fishermen. Why don't you? Go away. Go away. I don't want to fight 20,000 noble rebels. I'm siding with the nobility on this one. Veneration of Virgin Mary. You know what? Let's just all hands on deck. Let's just make the papal state hate us as much as possible. Too many, wait, too many diplomatic relations. Why? Oh, 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 because we have military access over here. We can cancel that, actually, now. All right, we have these heavy ships. We can come and blockade them to speed up the sieges. Now we're at 21. I don't think we take these guys. I think we just honestly white piece these guys. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be, it wouldn't be hard to take this land up here. They're allied. Aren't they allied to Scotland? So it'd be kind of annoying to attack them and have to fight. You know, we don't want to fight Scotland yet. That's right. We, we have a chance to capture their ships here, which could be good. Uh, we did not capture any of their ships, unfortunately. You know, what the heck? I'm tempted to say, hey, let's... Here we take this land. Burgundy will care. Geneva, of all places, will care. And Provence isn't even going to exist here in a second. Burgundy just is the one thing, one nation that's just always going to hate us. For some reason, Geneva's, like, got something out for us, so let's butter them up. Even a tiny, even a single grain of rice can tip the scale, you know? Um, and in terms of forming a coalition, maybe not in terms of winning it, but in terms of forming it. Oh, we can enact a new government reform. Centralized bureaucracy. We are trying to centralize France, or a decentralized bureaucracy. This will give us extra monthly autonomy change. This will give us extra max promoted cultures. We've talked a little bit about autonomy. When you take land, it starts with some autonomy and it decays down over time. I didn't actually say it decays down over time. But it works its way down to zero. If you have a territory, it stays at 90%. So territories are more strategic positions. This is more of a strategic holding than it is like an economic one. And it's also a lower development province, so that's fine. These provinces are high development, so we've stated them, but it still does have some autonomy that will burn off over decades. And, and this basically just means it'll burn off faster. That's good. That's good. Or we can get extra max promoted cultures. We haven't talked about promoted cultures. But if we took over all of England, the English are not French. So clearly the English, this culture would not be accepted to us. And these people would be just grumpy. And this actually, uh, when they're grumpy, like we have some Bosque uh, culture down here. This causes some penalties to the provinces. Now there's no unrest here. These people are learning to live with it. Um, but there's a little bit of extra local unrest, but the net is still negative. Um, that's how you check unrest. We've kind of done that intrinsically, haven't we, without discussing it it's not as much as we should. Um, local tax modifier, minus 33. Local uh, manpower modifier, minus 33. Local sailor modifier, minus 20%. So it's not the end of the world, but we do get less from these provinces. It's like there's a permanent amount of autonomy here, like 33% autonomy here, because it's not an accepted culture. So it's good to have uh, the cultures accepted. Well, how in the world does the English become accepted, or how does Bosque become accepted? You go here and you promote. You go here and you spend to promote those cultures to accepted cultures. So you can you can in, invest in, in promoting specific cultures. It costs 100 development points to do it. And you can change them out and stuff like that too. Now, the French group already has a bunch of cultures that are, are accepted. Like, like for, the Normans are not, like, accepted, accepted, but they're close. They're, like they're they're part of the same culture group as the french so the modifiers are weaker 
If we became an empire, though, all of this would be very much like our core culture. The English, however, never really becomes our core culture, so we would need to accept them over. We're already two out of two right now. So if we wanted more ability to move them over right now, it's not a big deal. But in the future, we will want more uh, promoted cultures. Either of these are totally fine. I'm going to get more promoted cultures, but the other option is completely valid. The other option would actually be better for us now. Promoted cultures would be maybe better for us later in the game. Nice. We can get another idea. This little symbol. Hey, light bulb comes on. We got an idea. Superior firepower. Our generals are going to be even better. Now they're going to have extra shock. They're going to have extra fire. And we have just gotten our first French idea. French language in all courts. We have extra. So basically the French language is taught in all courts. The Austrians are expected to learn French. Bohemians learn French. And this is not because we force them to, but just because of the culture and the, the diplomatic uh, prestige of, of the French reputation and everything. That, that the, the French language is, is taught amongst the nobility of Europe. And because everybody speaks French, we can speak French with each other, and we have better abilities to maintain good, positive relationships, and therefore we have extra diplomatic relationship slots, and we will no longer be penalized for going above uh, where we were, which is seven. In fact, now we can have eight. So we can go, we can go looking for another, uh, we can go looking for another uh, alliance if we wanted to. The next one is actually going to be twenty percent morale of armies, Alan which is one of the best ideas in the entire game and is unique to France. So this is one of the most powerful ones in the entire game. Three more and we'll have this. If we had this when we fought England, now we, there's no way we can get that in three years, but in, in future wars against England, that'll, that'll make England troops uh, uh, run in terror basically from the French. Looks like we've actually won our war in Ireland. We'll probably end up scooping up the land, but we're gonna beat up these ships over here. But guys, thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, during this episode we're marching ever closer to the war against the English which is great so we are going to uh, be preparing for that in three years war against the English thanks everybody for for hanging out here if you guys have questions please ask in the comments and I will make sure to answer all the questions and I will probably respond to all the non-question comments as well uh, the playlist link down below helps you keep track of the episodes and make sure you get to the next episode safely and smoothly um, so the playlist youtube playlist link in the description box is useful for that subscribing helps with that too because then you can just go to your subscription feed and you'll see all my episodes there um, but thanks everybody for being here guys i really appreciate it and we'll be back in the next episode probably well i don't know i don't know what the goals are for this playthrough but for the most part i'd say most players that have listened to this point you guys are the crazy ones if you're still listening to me um, are going to have a good sense of the game at this point and probably ready to venture out on them for themselves Orleans is about to be integrated. They're at 99.2%. percent they so like two or three months away from being integrated. We'll see what that looks like. And um, another big war against England would really sort of knock their teeth in, and that would be a very, very good thing indeed. Maybe we'll just target another war against England, and that might be the end of the series. Because if we can attack England and get a big foothold on the main English England itself... Um, then, then that will destabilize them enough that, that the rest will be a snowball effect. So, but thanks everybody for being here. I'll see you guys in the next episode.